Well, it's time for me to have a break from the 172 scale fighters. So I've gone for a 172 scale Junkers JU88A1, Battle of Britain, from Revel. Okay, this is going to be done in the uh, markings of the very first aircraft shot down on British soil during the Second World War. Not the one everybody seems to think, but actually it's the first one to land on British soil not in water. It uh, was shot down by gunners on H6, Risa Lodge gun battery on the island of Hoy in Orkney, where my grandfather later served. Now, this is quite a expansive looking kit. It's quite complicated actually. So a lot of parts there. 119 apparently. I don't know if they're all used. There might be some that aren't. Okay, but look at that. Wings, fuse, lars, tails, engines. Look at that. Props, spinners. Oh, there's all sorts of stuff. Bomb load. The works. Okay, so it's a really comprehensive looking kit. Now, there's also a lot of detail. It's a really finely crafted kit. I mean, look at that. That's that's really nice. Nice etching on the panels. Okay, it's not too deep. The cockpit interior. I mean, that looks pretty special too. It's totally unnecessary because I ain't about to see any of it. And I ain't going to be painting it up like, like one of these professionals. But, um, yeah, nice. I'm surprised at the uh, small size of the fuselage halves. However, that's because that's not all of it. There's other bits of the fuselage, like bits here and so on. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be quite interesting. Quite interesting. But it looks really well moulded. I'm looking around. I can't see any flash on anything at the moment. You know, it's um, it's really clean kit, really detailed stuff. So hopefully I won't make a complete and utter mess of it. Look at those wheels and tyres, that's nice. Hopefully I can do a good job of this. So there we go. The Junkers GUE A1, the first type. Well, let's look through that jumble of parts and start doing some of the cockpit stuff. There's uh, yeah, a few little bits. I'll get cracked on that for the time being. So there we go. It's everything done up to this stage, the first two pages. So there we go. That's all very intricate. Look at that. Far too fiddly for me, my fat fingers. I had to struggle with a couple of bits needlessly complicated in places but we've got there it will look good once it's uh, all put together though there we are all sprayed up with a bit of matte black and i'm going to put that outside to dry and go max it looks glossy at the minute obviously because it's nice and wet you can really see that it's uh, intricate stuff so there's the cockpit with the different pieces painted the different colours, there's not much difference. I'll take that bit of blue tack out of the way there. A uh, little bit of dry brushing just to pick out some detail. That's ready to assemble now. Well, there we go. There's the cockpit completed. Absolute pig getting those seats into position. Really struggled with that. Absolute nightmare. But, uh, yeah, on the whole, that looks pretty good, I think. Pretty good indeed happy with that right let's have a little look then so we've got a cockpit in there okay lots of tiny weeny fiddly parts some unnecessary this is unnecessary this is unnecessary you know you could just fit that into that bit speaking of which right this is unnecessary because I could have just oh, yeah Right, two halves. That is unnecessary. Three pieces instead of two, right. Tail wheel's lovely, lovely nice detailed tail wheel. Okay. Had to shave a bit off the side because otherwise I couldn't close the fuse last half. Now I've got a slight gap still to fill. But anyway, that's that's mm, some questionable amounts of 
split parts and extra parts and that. Anyway, that's going to stick together like that. Okay, that's going to give me my main fuse and that. Hopefully, it'll go together nice and simple. I've jumped a couple of steps ahead and fitted the front half of the fuselage to the rest of the fuselage. So now I'm waiting for that to dry. I'm going to crack on with the wings. So this is the third page, steps 16 to 25. Really nice moulding. Going back to this, I'm not overly happy. I've got to rub down a bit at the uh, back of the cockpit combing. A little bit of filling there. A uh, little bit of filling there. And I don't think it's quite right on the front. I don't think it fits correctly. But we'll deal with that when I've put a bit of primer on it. And there's the flaps. So two halves. Could have just moulded them in one piece. But no, two halves. They'll go onto the wings. The wings went together nicely. They snapped together really lovely. So that's good. So now I've got to glue those and then continue. Another four bits of flappery. And then look at this. Look, let's see those. Those are the wing tips. I've got four pieces on the inlet. Why? Why? Why do those need to be separate? And then why do they need to be in separate halves? There's no earthly reason on this kit to have that. And to have those split, I d oh. So here we have my eight pieces that form the wings, made out of 16 pieces, lots of faff and fiddliness, wing tips, ailerons, flaps, all possibilities for getting more fingerprints on everything. Anyway, that's, that's done. So they could go on and I could catch up onto there and then I'll be on to the tail planes. Well, I've filled and sanded and masked. I'm now going to uh, give it a little spray over in black to see where else needs some attention. So I've added on the tail planes and the rudder. They're looking okay. The main planes are looking okay. I've built the engines. I've got to put the dive brakes onto the wings, and I've built the bomb carriers so they're ready to go on so a little bit of continuation time so engines are fitted they went on nicely the bomb carriers that's the hard points whatever they're called they went on okay bit tricky bit fiddly don't look particularly right to me but uh, yeah so we'll carry on let that dry why I ask you why why do I need to put that into there, like gap in the fuselage. Just do it in two halves. Well, I'm working on the bombs now. These are such a pain, far too many bits. You know, you've got two halves, you've got four fins on each. So you've got to get them on, get them on straight, then get the end bits on, you know, and end up really, quite frankly, you could do that with two pieces, maybe three. So I don't see any advantage in molding those extra pieces. And it just, it gives you problems you know potentially just makes it more difficult for no reward no benefit well that's the fins added to make up my bomb halves hopefully they're going to be angled correctly and square enough to fit onto those bits but that we'll have to see once it's dry well i finally finished the construction of my Junkers JU88A1 Battle of Britain from Revel reason it's taking so long is because I got fed up with it. The glazing was uh, a nightmare because I had to paint all that. The place that I didn't like the construction. It's, uh, I like the paint job. I think the paint job looks great. But there's been all manner of issues with it. So it's just it's taken a few weeks to do the last final touches. So uh, yeah, now it's just on to the decals to do it as the uh, particular aircraft that I want. So there we are, finally completed it. The Revel 172 scale, Junkers JU88 A1, Battle of Britain version. Okay, now this has been coded differently. I had to get some different decals from a company called AIM. Okay, and then chop things about and so on. It's coded as 4D EK. 
of 1kg30. The aircraft this purports to be, 4D EK, was shot down on the 17th of September 1939 over Scapa Flow. It was coming in low over Risa Lodge gun battery, H6, uh, and they blew the nose off. One of the crew escaped, the rest of them perished, and they're now buried in the Naval Cemetery at Linus on, uh, on Hoy. The, uh, the aircraft came down onto Peggle Burn, the mouth of Peggle Burn, a small kind of river that came out from the hills and empties into the sea and exploded, covering a, a wide area. Surprisingly, there are still a few remains about. Of course, being the first German aircraft brought down onto British soil during the Second World War and by any aircraft gunfire, uh, is reason enough to build this model or to do decals for this model. However, I've been totally unable to find photographs of the original aircraft, so I don't know how accurate my decals are. Okay, I've had to kind of make some assumptions and hope for the best. However, nobody really knows. But being historical like that is not the reason why I've actually built this model. This was shot down, like I say, uh, from the gun site at H6 on the island of Hoy, Risa Lodge, which was where my grandfather was stationed later on with the same anti-aircraft gun battery. And I have myself visited it. I've also visited the crash site. So it seemed like a suitable and fitting aircraft to purport.